for many months I have been saving up all of my thrifted treasures and it's time for the show and tell. This is the most fun part because we all love seeing what everyone else gets thrifted and secondhand, right? I have so many uh, sewing supplies. I have so much fabric you will not believe. I have patterns, I have buttons, earrings, uh, cording, laces, all sorts of wonderful little treasures in here. And I've got even some clothing that I plan for refashions and I'm going to show you through all of it in this video so you can just see maybe what kind of treasures are out there waiting. The best part of going thrifting is not only the bargain hunting, but the showing and the going through of things after you find them, right? I know. So, you know, we, we've done this before. I like to save all of up my thrifted finds and show you and make videos about it. One, because so many people, every time I make these videos, there's always someone that's their mind is blown on the different, particularly sewing supplies and equipment, you know, fabric buttons, etc., that you can actually find secondhand. And it always opens up people's eyes into what is out there. And that's why I mostly like to do these videos. And that is what we're doing here. Because one, not only are thrifted treasures are better for your budget, <laughs> better for the planet, using secondhand items and reusing what we already have is, as you know, one of our core premises around here has been trying to be as sustainable as possible. So using secondhand is utmost on there. You actually find the most unique items, thrifted, secondhand, vintage, you find they're the best, the best, most unique, and you'll see. All right, what should we do? Let's do clothing, let's do patterns, let's do the buttons and small stuff, and then let's do fabric. Let's start with some of the clothing. So um, I'll go through these quickly, but these are some items, fashion items that I found and I have plans for a bit of refashing, fashioning, rejigging that I thought you might be interested in. I know you love this one, right? This one is oh so special. It is 100% cotton, crinkle cotton. So it's never going to actually crease itself. Black and white in this gorgeous little daisy. Actually, I don't know if they're daisies is beautiful. So the only trouble, what's wrong with this one, is that if you look real close, the armholes here actually start pretty much at my waist, which is, you know, okay. But the thing is, is when this is on, I can't actually lift up my arm anywhere because of these really weird, super large armholes. So what I'm thinking is I'll probably make this one sleeveless um, by the time I take this in slightly, it will get a little bit higher, but I might wear it as a little pinafore with a little black something, you know, under and just make this, as I said, sleeveless. Use the sleeves to make pockets, a belt, matching hair scarf or something, and do something like that because I think just belted and as um, sleeveless, it'll just be oh, beautiful with this. I was, that's probably my top, top find, um, I think, is that that fabric is just so me. All right, this one here is a little cutie. Look, it is a collots. They're, they're collots. <laughs> so it's, um, again, this one is a uh, linen cotton, um, you know, navy and white, definitely my colors. It is a little bit big. So what I'm planning to do is probably jimmy up something around the top to make it stay there. And these ties, I'm going to take those out and then actually create, uh, probably tighten the elastic that's in there so it fits my waist and then just make a proper belt so it belts up the whole thing uh, and then will be really cute. And it does have tiny little sequins here, but I don't know whether I like them. I might actually remove them. We'll see what happens when I get there. But this one was a really nice summer find. These are going to obviously be, you know, 1920s, 30s beach pajama style, that loose flowy, lovely, gorgeous, right? All right, this one here is super long dress, rayon, black and white spots. It has this lovely um, sort of cotton lace neckline. It does need some help. It's not made very well. It's, you know, flipping up and down. So I'll readjust the uh, lace on there. It is a bit big. I might just run in the side seams and again, just wear it loose, belt it up. I will have to shorten it a little bit, but I just thought a really nice flowy summer, even though it's black, I know, um, <laughs> dress. And then this one here is a super, super light um, cotton. It's like almost sheer see-through 
um, in navy, my colors, and I love the texture through this. I'll probably keep this in my refashion pile to maybe make it into a cute little, you know, um, corset cover style top or something like that. Then I did find this one, and as I pulled this out, I, like, I haven't washed this one yet, and it smells. So anyway, the fabric is lovely. I'm sure it will wash out. It's just that I didn't realize that I hadn't washed it yet. Um, again, really super light sheer fabric, um, black and white dots, just, you know, adorable. I might either leave as is for winter or maybe chop it up sleeveless for summer. I'm not sure, but let's put this stinky one over here for now. Okay, let's look at some of these patterns. Unfortunately, the days are gone of finding proper real vintage, um, you know, it's hard to find anything, I think, before the 1960s even, let alone I used to find 1930s and 40s patterns at the thrift store. No longer. Anyways, they're still great ones to find. And if you're starting out your pattern collection, oh, there's so many good ones there. I'll just go through them quickly. I got this one here, nice 70s skirt. I love these kind of like, you know, how many is this? Five five in one styles. I love these little tabs on this. I have lots of skirts like this, but I love seeing the little differences in details between how they're, um, you know, how they're constructed. Slight differences in the pattern make such a big difference to the end result. And this kind of A-line style is just my thing. Um, some nightwear. This is actually quite um, rare. You don't find things like this, these little um, sets with the robe and everything. So I loved this one. This one I picked up with, um, I love how they've actually done the bias through here. These are four different panels and I thought it might be really interesting at some point to let me see how they've constructed that and they do that. This one, okay, all right. This one I got because I just love getting hilarious patterns through history and this one falls into that category for sure. Uh, next up, again, plain numbers, just these like beautiful A-line skirts, button the side, the middle. I really just, um, I love seeing these, these like 90s version. And you know, then you, you, you have a look and compare the patterns, right? You see how the 90s version compares to the 70s version and the differences in the sway, the fit where the grain line is, it's remarkable. And I got a <laughs> lingerie with a very cleverly uh, planted little powder poof here, that is hilarious. Lingerie patterns uh, like this are actually Fairly rare, you don't see them that often, so I like to snap them up when I do find them. And of course, well, this one is just gorgeous. This sort of 70s does, 1930s number with this long, you know, um, circular style skirt and this little rough. I mean, you can see me wearing this, right? Anyway, there's a few to add to my collection. I don't get a lot of patterns these days, so this is actually a lot to add. But, um, you know, it's the kind of thing when you're starting, oh, there are so many plain basic skirts, plain basic tops and blouses. Mm, so good, so good. My advice, look for 1970s patterns. I find them the best. All right, uh, not only did I find this lovely cane basket uh, to put all of my goodies in, everything in here. So let's have a little closer look at this. All right, I've got all my small stuff organized here. Uh, I got a little another metal cuff. So, you know, if you've been around here a while, you know I make my own uh, wrist pin cushions. And yes, I have a tutorial on here on YouTube. I'll link that video down below as well. You can make your own. And I make it using these cuffs and they are so hard to find these days. So absolutely, if you see one, snap it up and you can make yourself a little DIY wrist cushion. Again, all with thrifted materials. Uh, ooh. I got a tape measure. So this one is super old school. It is like the dream. So it has both inches and centimeters, which I love. And either side starts at number one. So you can see how this end starts at one, but the other end here also starts at one on the other side. This is the dream tape measure. The only thing though is if you buy these secondhand, you must, must, must uh, lay it out and make sure it is actually still measures correctly because these stretch and shrink over time and you find it might not measure the same amount as it should. So if they don't last forever, make sure you measure it and check it. I'll see if I've got a winner here later on. Uh, all right, I get some, I found this lovely little trim that, you know, like is insertion. So when you insert it into two pieces like fabric here and fabric here, you end up with this lovely like bit in the middle with all these little threads. Like it's just going to be amazing. There's quite a bit here. So this was really, really great. Um, some little soutache cording here. I definitely love adding that to my collection where I can because when you need it, you need it. I found this one. This is so cute. 
it is just a red rose button. Unfortunately, there's only one, so it will have to be maybe one decorative little item here, but oh, it's perfect, right? If I could have uh, more of those, please. Uh, and then I did come across these buttons. So they are plastic. I don't usually go for plastic, but look how beaded and shiny they are. Now I did find two. I've got these black ones and then these navy ones here. And my advice is when you find buttons and you like there's lots of the same and you think, oh, I only need like three or four, five buttons max, buy all of them. Trust me, like these are all the navy and all these. I don't know that I'm going to use them, but trust me, my advice, it gives you options. You might want to put them like all down the sleeve on some evening dress or something, for example, and use them decoratively. When you get them all, it has options because you can never buy these for this price when you need them. Buttons are definitely something to definitely like keep in your collection and um, you know over time you just build them and when you need them they're there. I did find a bunch of little shell buttons. I just absolutely adore and collect these. These are pretty much like my favorite standard go-to instead of plastic ones these days. This is what I use. These ones have been dyed a little bit green interesting and enough. And a bunch of metal ones. Now again, I'm pretty much only getting natural, like shell, glass, metal. These are the ones that I'm really looking for now. So these will be really great um, to add when I need something a bit more tough. These are probably for my mister. We'll probably get those metal ones. And I get the pretty beaded fancy ones. Oh, look, more beaded ones. More beaded ones. I told you, get all of them. All right, here's some others. Um, more metal, some lovely little square ones. I think these are plastic, but um, they're a nice little shape. And again, I couldn't resist with these little flowers um, and some more metal. And I also found these wood ones. Again, really going for all the natural type ones just to have in my collection because when you go looking for them, you will never find them. Okay, these are quite interesting. Um, this is a little buckle. Look at this. So it is a little peg like this, right? So your belt would come off either end where my thumb is, and then you pull the peg to clip it in. I know, it's so cute, right? It is so cute. This is definitely screaming 80s to me. I don't know, what do you think? A relic from the 80s? Anyway, it's in my collection now, and I would definitely be using this little safety clip belt for something amazing. Uh, this one's definitely, definitely from the 80s. <laughs> so it's a little, um, like, flower, you know, little, elven leaf type thing you just kind of like claw it in and clip it and then you've got your belt buckle there so that will be really really um, cute I love these because again you can never find stuff like this and how unique I, if I tried I couldn't find something cute like this little um, peg peg one right so yeah thrifted stuff all the way all right and oh, so many things look at all these earrings all right I'll just go through these quickly so oh is that even more of those black <laughs> beaded <laughs> buttons I told you just get them all all right, a few bits of jewelry. This beaded necklace, oh, it's just wonderful. So, you know, it's going to match really nicely um, for that long dangly look. Um, plaited through the top and then oh, quite unique. Love this one. Bunch of clip-on earrings. Um, I mean, the bigger, the better, in my opinion. I love the colors and um, metal ones, of course, or metal look anyway. But a bunch of these, even though I have seven ear piercings, I only wear clip-on earrings now. So, you know, you can find these all the time. And yes, you can adjust them if they're too tight. You can adjust them. You just need to, like, loosen up the little clip in here. Anyway, Google it. You can loosen them. Oh, and a little... Um, uh, it's like frog closure so it's made of um, fabric and cord and it's just a little closure so you could use it for you know so cute of course it's red it's me okay time for fabric uh, I found so much so much fabric and I've done well in that I've pre-washed it all and it's ready to go in my cupboard that I've been saving to show you what about this one look at this so this of course was not fabric as say this is a bed quilt cover so this lovely um, blue, it is just wonderful. I love this texture to it. It is just remarkable. It's my color, 100% cotton. Uh, there is so much fabric here. It is like a queen, you know, bedspread or whatever, I think, or even king. You've got two sides. So there's the plain cotton for the back and then this texture on the front. I adore these kind of um, 
textured block you can have a block color but still have it really interesting um, with this texture and this print sort of woven into it I love it and I love the actual sort of washed vintage look to this color is really really amazing so uh, yes, there is so much fabric waiting for you in the bedspread, uh, the bedding section that you probably didn't realize. And again, these, this lovely yarn dyed 100% um, cotton. This red is like amazing, right? It's got that real country vibes. Again, these are curtains. Yep, these are curtains. Look how soft it is. It's actually quite a lovely, soft, um, beautiful, both sides, as I said, it's yarn dyed is just lovely. So I actually had hoped to make this dress already out of this uh, fabric, but, and wear it for this video, but that didn't happen yet. As you can see, my twirl is still there. Well, if you're interested, this is the design here. I'm going to have a square neck. I was hoping to do, well, what I call a reverse facing over the end and matching little pockets in this fabric. Uh, that was my first version of a twirl over there. But um, anyway, so there you go. You got a sneaky peek of that one. And then all of this, uh, again, 100% cotton. I can't believe I almost left this one behind because I didn't think, I didn't know what I would use it for ever. But I'm so glad I got it because I just love it. I think this is vintage due to the uh, short width that it is. And it's like blue, white, striped. I love it, this checks. So it is ever so slightly see-through of course. So then you always have to think about what you're gonna do with it. but. Anyway, I'm glad I got that one. This one is um, great find. There is a lot of fabric here, several meters of a sort of suiting. It's probably a linen, uh, cotton, might be poly rayon blend. Um, I'm not entirely sure. There is definitely enough um, linen in it and cotton that it's um, really crush worthy. And I'd say there's rayon in there too, just to the full and the feel of it. Um, and it's like so much fabric, so much fabric. This will make a delightful dress, skirt. There's enough so I can make a few things. Uh, remember the days of ye old cheesecloth fabric? Yeah, I found some and it's this lovely uh, navy color. Um, you know, I love cheesecloth. This is 100% cotton. It does crease, but due to the crinkle nature of it already, it, you know, it's that you don't have to worry about your actual garment creasing. So there's a couple of meters there. This would be beautiful, like a, you know, 1930s, like peasant top or something. Oh, love that one. Ooh, this one. This one is really interesting. So I found this navy and a black the same. Um, like a really, it's just a really light voile. There's several meters of them. Super, you know, sort of sheer and light. I'm actually, I have to do a burn test to find out, but I think it might be a silk cotton because it is so fine and delicate and smooth and really shiny. Makes me think it's silk cotton because it is glorious. Both of, both of these, these obviously must have come from the same um, person who's donated them and oh, so good. So these would be beautiful for sheer blouses and uh, things like that. So it was a really good find, those ones. Ah. I got this knit. All right, this one's a little bit different. I don't usually go this kind of color, but again, it's this texture that's been, um, in this case, knitted into the fabric that I really adore. And I like knits with holes in them, essentially, like big gaps and holes, because they're really nice and cool to actually wear. I find them really nice. So I'll probably, um, yeah, I thought this was worth keeping. Like I don't get a lot of knits because I'm just not that interested, but I love this uh, textured knit that yeah, I think I'll do something with that one day. Um, all right, I'm definitely making an Edwardian type skirt out of this one. This is uh, probably linen cotton, um, I think. It's very, quite stiff in its nature, a little bit sheer and see-through, so it needs some um, lining or something there. But I mean, yeah, that would just be amazing in a big A-line skirt, nice, nice heavy solid waistband. Yeah, you can see it already, right? Um, well, you know how I was talking about holes in fabrics before? Well, this one has one. Can you see it's actually like dotted in? So I imagine they're like laser, not even laser cut, but laser pricked through. So it may be that this is a poly cotton. Um, it creases a lot. So it makes me think that maybe it's not, maybe it is just 100% cotton. A burn test would um, tell, but 
Either way, it must have enough cotton in it. And I, again, I just love those things with those little breathing holes in them. So it's just a plain, plain woven with those little dots, which is really nice. And back to the bedding department. I think you'll be surprised about this one. I found, look at this, this is glorious. Look, look at this fabric. It is the most softest, beautiful rayon that you've ever seen. Lovely, soft, drapey, oh, color, perfect. This is a bed sheet. I know, I've ne I don't think I've ever found rayon bed sheets before and in a color I love. So you can imagine how much fabric is in this, of course, and it's just, it's going to make the most beautiful dress. You couldn't buy this much lovely rayon for the, I don't even know, probably $5 or something that this whole sheet was. So, oh gosh, I can't tell you enough to keep your eyes out in the, the, the bedding department for the curtains, you get linen and cotton, oh, so good, so good. And I always find collecting things like buttons and haberdashery and that sort of thing because then they're in your collection and then when you need something, I sew from my stash, so to say, and I pull out things that are in my stash and I use those and that's how this all works for me. I hope it's given you some great, uh, like, wow, I didn't know I could find all this, right? Who knew? Because uh, there is, there is so much wonderful treasures out there. I would love to hear what was your favorite? What would you not have left behind either in my little haul here? I'd love to hear down below. Uh, until next time, my sewing friends, happy sewing. <laughs> Bye.